Okay, so I know what you're thinking. Chess is hard. Where do I begin? In this video, I'm going to give you guys three openings and two strategies. If you follow these openings, you will always know what's going on. You're going to have a lot more control in your game and it's going to help you get better faster. All you need is three, three openings, Stonewall, Stonewall Dutch, and the French. I've been teaching this kind of curriculum for the last maybe five years. I've been teaching chess for 12 years. And in the last five, I have seen a lot of people go from zero to 1400 really fast or zero to a thousand. So this is the fastest, most efficient way to get good at chess. And all you have to do is watch this video. It's gonna be about 30 minutes long. And then if you wanna test your knowledge, I have created tests where you can test yourself and, and find out, do I really know the material? If you know the material, you will always know what opening you're gonna play. If you always know what opening you're gonna play, you're gonna feel comfortable in the game. So that's the intro. Now we're gonna get right into the material. Okay, so we're gonna start with the stone wall. Now, the stone wall is a pretty simple opening, but you can play aggressive, you can play defensive, you can play positional. It's very flexible. And what I like about it the most is very simple. So the way it starts is D4, Let's say d5, e3, knight f6. I'm going to just make normal moves for black, and then f4. So the first checkpoint that you're going to do is d, e, f. So the d pawn, the e pawn, and the f pawn. And you're going to go 2, 1, 2. All right, so that's how you begin. You're going to create your wall. This way, you can't really get checkmated fast. You have a very good defense that can turn into offense. So the next thing you want to do, and this is just an opening principle in general, is you want to castle and develop your pieces. Now, generally, knights come out first. Now, let me tell you guys a small story of why it's better to go knights first. So my student was playing in nationals. Uh, he's about like 1300, like pretty good chess player. And he's like, well, I can do whichever one. So he's like, I'm going to go bishop first, okay? So bishop b7, and instead of going knight f3, which would have been the normal move, he goes bishop d3. And now black goes bishop takes g2, the rook is trapped, and now he's going to lose material. This is not how you want nationals to go. It's already hard enough. That's why you keep it simple and you follow the rules. So back to the normal position, we're gonna go d5, e3. So we're gonna build the wall. Now knights come out first, let's say here. Now bishop, castle, and then here you castle. So this is checkpoint one. You wanna get the wall, you wanna develop your pieces, and then you wanna castle. Now we're gonna start adding on to it. So if they go c5 or they go knight c6. So if they do here, we wanna go c3. Now let me show you guys why. So if you go knight d2, for example, they can go knight b4 and they can try to get your light score bishop. So of all your pieces, this is your best piece for offense. It's pretty much your striker, it's your Messi, it's your Ronaldo. Like when you need a goal, when you need checkmate, this is your guy. So that's why here, let me go back to c5. We go c3, and now if they go c4, trying to move the bishop, we just tuck it back on the diagonal, and we're going to have a great attack. So now, now you know what to do with c5 or knight c6. So generally, this is going to be the next phase of the attack. You're going to go knight e5. So this is what we call an outpost. So chess is like war. It's like a battlefield. And an outpost is a very strong square that you can use to leverage your pieces. So if you look at this knight here, it's protected by the f-pawn and the d-pawn. So it is very protected. Now we'll go over the captures in a sec, but I want to show you guys the general flow. So you get the outpost, and now what you do is you're going to rook lift. So rook f3, and you go rook h3. Now I'm just going to make some moves, for example, let's say rook e8. Now here it looks like the knight is defending this pawn. The bishop and the rook are not enough to win this pawn. But what we can actually do here is go bishop takes pawn, knight takes, and then we go queen h5. In a separate video, I'll show you all the types of finishing and all the types of tactics that come along with the rook lift, but this is just the general one. Now, if he tries to run, for example, f6, um, I mean, there's a bunch of mates here, but the one I want y'all to know is push him to the corner, and then you have this smothered checkmate with the knight. Now, of course, if he tries to run, like rook e8, for, d8, for example, we can take and take, this is mate. These are the two checkmates I want y'all to know in the beginning. In the second video, we will build on this and you'll know what to do. All right, so that's the general flow. So we got the rook lift. We get, Okay, so we have, I'll review it real quick. We got D, E, F, step one. So here, D, E, F. Now we got knights come out first. 
and then we got bishops. Okay, and now if c5, we're gonna go c3 and finish building the wall. Um, and we're gonna go over the captures in a sec. So castle, castle, and now we would outpost and then rook lift. So now let me show you guys what to do if they start capturing your pieces, which you're gonna see a lot. In the beginning, people always wanna capture, they wanna check, so they're gonna try to, if you give them an option, they're probably gonna take it. So first, let's look at take on d4. So if they take on d4, we're gonna go pawn takes. And what you wanna do is take this way so that you can open up this bishop. Um, whenever they take on d4, just know this is already really good for you. So let's say they take on e5, you go f takes and they tuck back. So now if you look at this position, you have a beautiful pawn chain. You got two snipers pointing perfectly at this king. And here I think queen h5 would already be winning. You could also go rook f3. Um, just to show you how good this position, I'm gonna turn the engine on. If you wanna guess the eval, go ahead and do it now. You can pause the video. Um, but I think it's about plus three, this position. Um, let's see what the computer says. Okay, so it's only about plus two, I'd say. But as you can see aesthetically, it's very hard for black to defend. All right, so we have all the captures. Now, next thing I wanna go over is early c4 and late c4. And then we will take a look at a different structure. So bishop d3, c5, we know to go c3. So if the, actually, let me do it this way first. So knight f3, let's say c5, uh, c3, and now c4. So this is early c4 because it is before the bishop moves, before the LSB moves. Generally, whenever they play c4, I want you all to know that you are better here. This is bad for black and good for white. So if they go early c4, you're going to go b3. The idea is if they go b5, you go a4, and they cannot go a6 because you take and you have this pin. So if they take here, you would just take the rook, we'd be happy, we'd be chilling, and we'd be up material. So b5, a4, let's say, for example, they try to take this pawn. Now, the strat you want to do here is you actually take towards the center. So take take and you can take bishop takes but a nice little maneuver here if you want is queen takes pawn check bishop block whatever block and queen takes c4 and we are up a pawn we got six pawns and they have five and our bishops come into where it wants we have a great position here okay so that's what you do of early c4 now let's say for example knight c6 bishop d3 and now they go c4 so this would be late c4 because this is after the bishop moves so here we just tuck well, let's just do the normal stuff. And what I want you all to know against late c4 is there's two ideas you can do. You can either keep the outpost, rook lift, and the same strategy. But also what I want you guys to know is if you get to go e4, for example, just let's, let's just say like here, if they take this, this is great for you. You have a very strong wall, no pressure on d4, and you can continue with the attack. And let's say, for example, they do not take... Let's say they come back because they're scared, they're afraid, they're terrified. So we'd go e5, and now here we have a huge, huge space advantage and a very nice attack on the king side. This is your strong side. This is what you're going to attack, okay? So that's what you're going to do with early c4 and late c4. Now there's, there's, a, there's just like two more things that I want you all to know in the stone wall. And once you know this, you pretty much have a really, really good base in openings. So you're going to always know what's going on. Um, and in the next video, the blue belt video, um, we will go even more in depth. And in the purple belt video, we will go even more and more in depth on the stone wall and all the intricacies. So the other variation I want you guys to know is if they don't go d5. Let's say knight of six, for example. So here, here, and there's a very common opening from the black side. It's called the perk or the king's Indian or the modern. They're, they're all kind of the same thing. There's something like really, I think about d6. If there's no knight of six, it's the modern, I think. And the other ones are all like, you know. All right, so you, you, the great thing about the stone wall is you always do the same thing. You're gonna go here, and now let's say they go d6, or let's say they go rook e8. So what you wanna think here is we cannot outpost because if we go here, they're gonna go d6 and they're gonna kick our knight. And it wouldn't make sense to outpost if they can just kick you. Now, what this means is you can always do something else. If they don't push this pawn, that means that you can go e4 and take the big center. So if you get this big center, this is always a good idea. Um, pushing e4 and rook lifting are going to be your main avenues to attacking in the stone wall. Um, and let, let me just give you guys a couple extra moves because I want to show you guys the Walmart position. So let's say here, let's say we go knight d2 and they go e5, right? 
So this is another idea that you want to know. It'll make more sense later on, but we can just start laying the seeds. E5 is the big break that they always want to do against the stone wall to shatter this wall. They want to try to push E5 and break your wall, and you want to be ready for it. Um, the If anyone watches Game of Thrones, this is always, like breaking the wall with E5 always reminds me of the Night Watch and the Ice Dragon breaking the wall. If anyone gets that reference, comment in the video or something. So anyway, so we're going to go take take and go d5 and this is what i call the walmart position because you have the super center you have a really big center here um think about like walmart um now another thing i'll show you guys is for example if you take here you win a pawn but they're gonna go knight g4 they're gonna get the pawn back they threaten this and this is what i call the kmart position it is not going to stand it's not gonna hold it's not strong enough so we try to go walmart um and let me just go over one thing real quick just okay Obviously, these are not moves that are going to be made, but this e5 pawn, a lot of times you're going to be like, yo, I can just take this pawn. It's a free pawn. Be very, very careful taking this pawn. You're going into this line of fire. Like, for example, if you took here, there are ideas already, like knight takes pawn or knight takes pawn, because if you take, they take back. So be careful taking the e5 pawn. If you're going to take it, generally take it way later, way later when you're ready, um, and that's the idea there. All right, so now two small things um you can think actin the actin boys were having this part of the test we went over it so it's part of the test Let's start test one so we're going to go over england gambit and then bishop g4 so really simple really quick but they're good to know so especially at the lower level when you're beginning out you're going to see a lot of people play these these weird gambits because they're trying to get you to fall for traps so with the stone wall we're going to be ready i've seen every trap possible pretty much and i'm going to have you guys prepared so take on e5, knight c6, we defend the pawn, they attack it again. And let me show you guys what you what they want you to do and what you should do. So they want you to go bishop f4, queen b4 check, hitting the bishop, attacking the king. So here we go, you would think you would go bishop d2. So bishop d2, queen takes b2, bishop c3, and here they go bishop b4. And their idea is, okay, if you take here, they win the rook. If queen d2, they want to take here. And if queen takes bishop, queen c1 is mate. And if knight takes bishop, then queen takes a1 is mate. And the reason why I know this opening is one of my students used to play it, and I didn't fix it. And eventually, as he got better, he learned like that the game is just don't work. They know what they're doing. So that's what they want you to do. Now let me show you guys what you're supposed to do. So here, you just give the pawn back. Let them take. And now you go bishop f4. So bishop f4, hitting the knight. If they did something like this, for example, knight d5 would be catastrophic. You're hitting here, you're going to take a check, you're going to fork the, the king and rook. Um, that would be game over, right? So take bishop f4. Generally, what you'll see is they will take on f3. Pawn takes f3. And now knight d5, once again, is a big threat. So knight f6. And this is what I want you to remember is queen d2 and try to castle queen side. So you castle queen side, you have the, this, you got the open g file, you have a space advantage, you're going to go e4, have a big center. We're very happy with this position in the England Gambit. Um, so just to be real quick, so d4, e5, it's a funny gambit, they're sacrificing a pawn. So take knight c6, knight f3, and really all you have to know is give back the pawn and castle queen side. If you remember those two things, you will find your way through the rest. So here and here. Now. In the next video, I will go over d6. I think it's called the Charlotte Gambit. Um, that, that's a, a funny name. But yeah, we'll go over this in the other video. I don't want to give you all too much to learn. So we have d4, e5, and the last variation for the stone wall, if you want to pass the first test, is what happens if here, here, let's say f4, sorry, and bishop g4. All right, so bishop g4, remember with the stone wall, we do the same exact things. So when you see bishop g4, you want, to think, you want to think two things. Is there a pawn on e6? Yes or no? If there is no pawn on e6, you can go h3. Now here, if he goes bishop h5, you go g4 and here, and you trap the bishop. Now, obviously, we're probably not going to castle king side. We're going to castle queen side. We'll be up a piece. We'll be chilling. We'll be happy. Now, after h3, if he takes on f3, we go queen takes, and then we have two bishops. Uh, we can't exactly rook lift, but we still have a nice position here. So now let me show you if, you, if they go e6. So if they go e6, 
Now H3 doesn't work because after here, here, and here, there's no F5 because this pawn protects that square. So against bishop g4 with e6, this is all you got to do. Bishop d3, c5, c3, normal stuff. And then this is where you make the read. Okay, bishop g4, e6. We go queen e1, and then we go knight e5. We break the pin, and we get it, get ready to basically lift the queen and come back to all the checkmates on this king side. Okay, so that's the stone wall. So that's, per that's everything you need to know in the beginning of the stone wall to pass the white belt test. Um, now let me show you a big reason why I like the stone wall a lot because you can play it from the black side so let's say they start d4 so your first two moves with black are always going to be e6 and then d5 this is your first two moves no matter what now this is how you know if it's a stone wall dutch or if it's a french so if it's a french there's a pawn on e4 and we'll go over that next now if it's a stone wall dutch there's no pawn on e4 so if you play e6 d5 there's no pawn on e4. What you're going to do is go f5, and now you have a stonewall dutch. You already know what to do here. So knight f6, um, e3. Remember, don't forget, we don't go bishop d6. We go c6 first. If c5, this is early c5, so we go b6. Um, if he doesn't go c5, if he does this and this, this is late c5. We know all this kind of stuff. Um, and that's pretty much all you got to know for the stonewall dutch. Uh, one bonus I'm going to give you guys, just so you know, is after bishop g5 here, um, you would think you go h6, but the problem is they can take here and take here. So in this line, in bishop g5, this is actually, I don't think, on the test, so you, this is just a bonus if you know it, or maybe I'll make a bonus question. Um, if they go bishop g5, go c6 first, and then try to go h6, and do all the same stuff. So that's the beat of Stonewall. You learn two openings, one from the white side, one from the black side, and you can play against everything. So the last opening that we have to go over is the French. So e4, e6, d4, and d5. All right, so here we have the French. There's three Frenches you're going to have to know. Exchange, Advance, and Blackburn. You know those three, you pretty much know everything. And as you probably know from before, I will build on in the next video. So first we're going to go over Exchange. So Exchange and Advance will be what you see the most <clears throat> in the beginning. As you get better and better, you'll see more knight t2, knight c3. Um, and of my students, they really like the advanced French and the, adva and the, the exchange French is kind of mid. Um, basically, you're going to have to play positional. There's a wild way you can play, but it's just bad if white plays it correctly. So I'm not going to teach you all that. So I'm going to show you guys three variations in the exchange French. We're going to go over c4, knight c3, and then um, knight f3. Okay, so c4. So this is where we're going to get an IQP structure, an isolated queen spawn. So let me show you guys time travel and chess, OK? So let's say we take and take. OK, so try to remember this position in your head. Now let's say we go knight f6, they go bishop d3, and we take and take. It's the same position for white, but black got an extra move. So that is why when they go c4, we capture this pawn after the bishop moves. That way we make them waste the tempo. This is how you equalize as black. Now, when you're playing against the IQP, just to talk about um, chess strategy for a little bit, um, people think this is always good or always bad. So you have to know the strategy to play against it to maximize or leverage the weakness or the strength of d4, if that makes sense. So isolated pawns are bad in end games, and they're good in middle games. In middle games, it's isolated. There's no pawns to the left or right. So you're going to have two open files or semi-open files. And you're going to have this diagonal and generally h7 square. This is going to be your path to attack. Um, so from the black side, you want to get to an end game and trade pieces. That is how you play against the isolated pawn. So here, to initiate that, we're going to go bishop b4 check. Now, if they go bishop d2, we're happy to trade because we're playing against the isolated pawn. Now, the move that I want you guys to really start to get down is put this knight on e7, not f6. This is actually the one case you can go f6, but for now we're just going to go knight e7, castle, castle, and we're going to try to attack this pawn. We're going to go knight c6, or probably c6, try to trade pieces, get to an end game, and then grind out this weakness. So that's what you're going to do against the c4 variation. Wait for the bishop to move. So let's say bishop b4 check, bishop d2, take, take, develop, 
let him move the bishop. Now we take, and actually even here, you can already win a pawn. So we're going to try to attack this weakness. And we'll get more into strategy in other videos. So that's if they go c4. Now if knight c3, we have a very simple idea. We go c6 because now the knight is dominated. It can't really go anywhere from c3. And um, we're happy here. And now the maneuver, once again, that I want you all to really know is bishop d6, knight e7, castle, and castle. You're going to try to play with this. So we put the knight on e7 because if it was on f6, they would go bishop g5. And they would have this pin, this annoying pin. But with the knight on e7, we can go f6, and let's say bishop h4. And then this is an idea that we'll talk about more in the future, but you can already grab the bishop pair here with knight f5. The bishop has nowhere to go. He comes back. Take, take. We have two bishops. We have a slight advantage from the black side. And this is how we play the exchange French. Um, so we have bishop d6, this knight e7 idea. And lastly, I just want to show you guys in general what to do here. Bishop d3, and we're going to go bishop d6 knight e7. We'll get more into this bishop g4 pin ideas in other videos, but for now, if you all can get here and just play chess, boom, you got it. If c4, we take isolated pawn, and if knight c3, we go c6, and knight is dominated. And that is all you need to know in the exchange French. Now we're going to go over advanced French. Now this is, it's going to be a little bit confusing. You're probably going to have to watch this a couple times, but once you understand it, you're just always going to be better. And I'm telling you this from experience with all my students. They love the advanced French because they know it well. And you're just going to end up being up a pawn most of the time. Okay, so let me let me recap. So e5, so we the, the battle is over the d4 pawn. We're going to go c5 to attack this. If they take here, for example, we go bishop takes. This pawn is weak. And now we already chilling. So generally they go c3. We go knight c6, putting more pressure on this pawn. They go knight f3. And we go queen b6, putting even more pressure on this pawn. Now, the two variations we're going to go over in this video are bishop d3 and bishop e2. Okay? Um, so if bishop d3, same kind of principle from um, the exchange French, we capture this pawn after the bishop moves. So take, take. Um, let me show you guys why. So let's say they take this pawn now. We go bishop takes and f2 is kind of a problem for them. They have to go queen e2 or queen c2, and then f this pawn is weak. But after bishop d3, let's say we go bishop d7, and they take and take, now they can just castle. So they don't have to make any concession, and um, take on c5 actually is a very legit variation here. Um, so bishop d7, actually, let me, let me show you guys this trap too, just so you all know. So bishop d7, take, bishop takes. So this will be on the second test, the blue belt test. But if you go 97 here, for example, they can go b4, trapping your bishop. This actually has happened to me once, but I also did go on to win that game. <laughs> so bishop d3, we take on d4, the bishop moved, sorry. So here, take, and now we cannot win this pawn. Please do not lose like this. Take, take, we have a line of fire, queen, bishop, queen, and bishop check, and now you lose the queen. The saddest part is after bishop d7, they don't even take your queen, because then you get the bishop. They can actually take here first with check. In between move, king takes, take, and now you're just down a queen, and you literally could resign that position. So we don't take here. What we do, and this is why we like the advanced French, because it makes sense, we go bishop d7. And now if castle, for example, we would happily just gobble this pawn. If take, take, there is no check, we would trade queens. Um, and we'll go more in depth in this variation too. And I just want you all to know, if bishop e3, Two things. One, you can take here with check, so now the queen's not hanging. And then you can take here. And then just always know, if they move this dark square bishop, if they go bishop e3, b2 is hanging. You're going to win so many games where you just win this pawn. Um, trust me, I've seen it again and again. So bishop d3, we take on z4, and then we go bishop d7 to win the pawn. Now, if bishop e2, the bishop moved. So once again, we're going to take on d4, take just in case if knight takes remember you just win this pawn straight up um so pawn takes pawn um and now this would not make sense because the queen and knight are defending this pawn like this so you wouldn't even be winning this but the difference is now you can go knight e7 and if castle you go knight f5 and you hit this pawn now here if you get this far just know you're already winning um there's no way for him to defend this pawn except for bishop e3 now, if bishop e3, remember, if the bishop moves, we can take on b2. So we take here first. And then at some point, we can take this bishop. 
once you win this pawn, this is also another good thing to know, castle ASAP. You're up material, but you're down development. They shouldn't be able to win anything unless you make a mistake. So as long as you try, if, as long as you castle and start trading, you're gonna be up a pawn in the end game. You're gonna be cruising, and you're gonna be super happy. You started playing the advanced French. So that I believe is all we're gonna go through in the advanced French in this video for the white belt test. There's gonna be a lot more in the blue belt test. Um, so definitely, if you like this, um, keep with it, and, and, and the next video you're gonna love. All right, so the last opening that you need to know. So basically, you're gonna have three openings and then a couple variations in the, the French. So d5, if they go knight c3, if they go knight d2, if they go anything else, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take on e4 and then take, and they're gonna take back. So you wanna go knight f6, but if you do, take, take, your queen is out, it can get sus. I'll even show you just real quick how bad it can get, like here, here, and, and now your queen is pretty much in a world of pain. I think you can actually dance around if you, if you if you want, but we're gonna avoid that. So the way we do that is we go knight d7 first. So now let's say knight f3 and knight f6, and now if they take, we're just gonna take back. Um, for this test, for the white belt test, all I want you all to know is knight d7, then you go knight f6, and let's just say they don't take, we're gonna go bishop e7, castle, and then c5 at the end. If y'all can get that far, that's plenty as far as y'all are gonna need to know. So C5 here. Try to get this and you'll build on it. The next video will be up very soon. So you can definitely watch it to get all the intricacies. But for now, that's all you need to know. And remember, this is the one you're gonna see the least. So that's all the openings you're gonna need to know as a beginning chess player. Um, you pretty much always get the French Stonewall, Stonewall Dutch. Um, it's guaranteed. Um, so definitely check this out. And if you feel ready, let me know and I can send you all the tests and you can try to take the test. Um, and then last thing I want to talk about, I think I said two, but three strategies on how to know what to do in chess. All right, so this is going to be basically everything you need to know, opening, middle game, end game, and then some really good middle game strats. If you all can learn this as a beginner, you will have good fundamentals and good foundations. Okay, so first thing we're going to focus on or talk about is what to do on your move. When your opponent moves and hits your clock, hits their clock, or your opponent moves, what should you do? So two things that I really want y'all to to get down. First thing is what does my opponent's move do? If you guys can understand what your opponent's move does, one, you will never lose a piece for free. Generally, what happens is they attack your piece, you do something else, you lose it. Um, also, if you understand their move, at least you know what they're doing. And I think this is a good life analogy. If you understand why people are doing things, um, you can generally make a decision better, more efficiently. So chess is like life, blah, blah, blah. All right, so the last thing you should do every move is what does my opponent's move do? So these two right here. So what does my opponent's move do? And what is my opponent going to do after my move? So before you let go of the piece, before you make your move, really put yourself in your opponent's shoes and think, okay, what is he gonna do? If you can just take your piece, you probably don't move there. Um, so these are the two things I want y'all to focus on when you're moving. Um, one thing I'll say is attacking, check mating, check um, trading. Comes very natural in the beginning. Like you just want to do something, so you do something. Um, so if y'all can get really good at defense, if you guys can have good defense, you already know how to attack most of the time, most people. Um, if you get your defense good, you will not lose. In the beginning, if you don't lose, you will win. That is a very good strat in the, the beginning phase of pretty much everything. As long as you don't make mistakes, as long as you kind of have a good grip on, a uh, good control of what's going on, um, you're going to be in good shape. All right, so now the next. So let's go opening, middle game, end game. The three phases of chess. So opening, we're going to keep really simple. So whether you all play the Stonewall or you play the French or you play anything, these two things are the most important beginner principles. Develop your pieces and castle. Please castle. I see so many horror movies of people who don't castle. And their king is like on the other side of the town, surrounded by a gang, about to get just mugged. <laughs> like that's like you see the king in the middle of the board, you see it all the way in the other corner. You're like, man, that guy had a rough life. So please castle, keep your king safe, um, and then develop your pieces, get your pieces out. Um, and we'll talk about more of this as we get um, on further and further along. Um, but we can keep it simple. So opening those two. So middle game. Um, this is generally the flow of what you want to think about in the middle game. Okay, so first you wanna think, where is my strong side? 
So just to give you all an example, let me just pull up some random position that we were going through. Um, I kind of want to do a stone wall one low key. Okay, so let's say this position, for example, and we're white here. So your strong side is generally going to be where their king is. And here, I'm just going to give a couple moves so it's even more clear than it is now. Let's say we have this position. So the way the sides work in chess is A through C is the queen side. C through F is the center, and F through H is the king side. If you castle queen side, this is still the queen side. It doesn't switch to where the king goes. That's a common question that I've got. So your strong side here is going to be where their king is, which is the king side. So generally, this is the side of the board that you really want to focus on. A common mistake that I see is people start doing stuff on this side or this side, and it's like, you're focused over here. Like, why are you messing around over here? Generally, if you make moves on your weak side, it's going to help your opponent checkmate you. So that's the idea of strong side, weak side. Weak side would be the queen side here. Strong side would be the king side. Um, so let's go back to this. So you have your strong side, so you know what side of the board to focus on. The next step you're going to do is you're going to bring more pieces to the strong side. The general rule is you want two more attackers than they have defenders. If you have plus two on attack, there's a high probability there's a tactic, and that's where this formula for attacking comes in. Now, some things you want to add to this formula is a strong pawn is equal to plus one on the attack, and a weak king is also equal to plus one on the attack. So if you have three attackers and they have two defenders, but you have a strong pawn, you actually have four attackers. Or they have a weak king, you actually have plus four versus two, so you'd be plus two in that position. Now, sometimes there's, there's exceptions. Um, if you get stuck, just bring more pieces. The more firepower you have, the easier it's going to be for you to push through. And then the last thing, um, after you're plus two, or you, if you don't find a tactic, you want to open up the position. So open up the position, that means we want to trade pawns, get rid of pawns in front of their king. Think about the pawns in front of their king. Let's look real quick at this again. These pawns are the bodyguards. If these pawns were not here, imagine these pawns were all gone. This king would be way weaker. It'd be way easier for you to attack him. Same with these three. These are your bodyguards. Um, so you want to try to get rid of the pieces in front of their king. That way you can try to checkmate them. Um, so we have strong side, bring pieces, open up position, and try to get plus two on attack. General flow that always works. End game strats, we're not going to go too deep in. I, most of you guys don't really get end games. Um, but the one thing that I want y'all to know to for the white belt test is to win an end game, you want to promote a pawn. Don't try to checkmate generally. Okay, so real quick, end games begin when the queens are traded. The reason why this is generally why the end game begins is there's very little threat of checkmate once the queens are off the board. Now there are queen and pawn end games, but generally is only a queen or it's a queen and a piece. And once again, threat of checkmate is way less than if there were more pieces on the board. So if you get an end game, you trade queens, try to win by promoting a pawn. Try to push your pawns. The same, the same strong side bring pieces kind of works with this, but we'll get more into that in the future. Um, now these 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 middle game strats that I want I think are just very important and uh, everyone should know because um, this actually you're gonna see this throughout your chess career your chess life like uh, what do you when do you trade pieces and what do you do when you're winning so the first thing we'll go over is when to trade um, so the acronym that I created is called Cuba C is for cramped U is for up material B is for bad piece for good and A is for attacked. So if you're cramped, if you don't have much space, generally you want to trade so you free up more space in your position. If you're up material, you want to trade so they have less things to do, um, less ways to uh, attack you. Um, and then obviously bad piece for good, we're always going to want to do. And then if you're being attacked. So this is a very important strat. I'm going to actually add defense here just a little bit. Uh, nothing crazy we're going to do here. Um, but if they're attacking you, if they're trying to checkmate you, if you can trade queens, that's gonna make it way, way easier for you to defend in this position. Trade the queens, and a lot of times you're just gonna survive. So if you're being attacked, trade queens. That's the big thing that I want y'all to know for defense. Um, I mean, okay, don't open up your king, cast all this stuff, but we'll get more into the, the details of that um, in the future. And just to recap, uh, when not to trade, it's the opposite of these. If you have more space, you don't want to trade because then your opponent gets more space. Um, if you're down material, generally you don't want to trade because then you have less to work with. Um, don't trade a good piece for a bad piece. And then if you're attacking, remember you want plus two for the formula. If you start trading away pieces, it gets hard to be plus two. Um, of course, there's exceptions for all these, but 
these are the general rules that kind of pretty much always stand. Um, the golden rule of trading is trading is bad because their piece comes forward to recapture. Um, let me just show you guys an example like this. Okay, so we try to trade bishops here. Now, if you take, if they take, they're bringing our queen forward. So generally, of course, there's some backwards trades, but generally, if there's a trade, their piece comes or the piece comes forward, and that's going to help the side that is being traded. So that's why only trade if it's one of these reasons. Now, these reasons come up a lot. Like this is going to happen. All, you're always going to have one of these reasons, pretty much. Um, but just remember. Only are you going to trade if you Cuba. Do the Cuba analysis when you're thinking about trading. Now, the last thing, the way to wrap it up, and I think this is a very important thing, um, what do you do when you have a winning position? Um, I've seen this maybe a million times. My students, myself, we get winning positions, and then we sell. We sell hard. Like We find the only way to lose. Um, for now, I just want you guys to focus on TKO. Um, for people who play sports or do martial arts, TKO is technical knockout, um, which I think makes a lot of sense that you want to think about when you're winning, but it's very different actually. So when you're winning, the T stands for trade. You want to trade pieces that you already know. Um, when you're winning, you want to keep it simple. Keep it simple, stupid. So small story here. I was watching UFC one day and Dean Thomas came on and he talks about the idea of kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. He trains his fighters like when you're winning, when you're doing or when you're even playing, don't do too much, especially when you're winning. You already did the hard part. We have these moments when we're winning where we're like, oh, I can just do this, whatever. Or I think this is going to work, whatever. When you're winning, you don't have to do that. You already did the hard part. You're winning. Just keep it simple. Eventually, you have more material. You're going to win this position. Um, so keep it simple is a very, very important one, one that I <laughs> need to apply to myself a lot more. Um, and the last one is open up the position. So my little story here is the great movie 300. If you haven't watched it, definitely check it out. Uh, it's about the Spartan army fighting the Persian army. Um, and basically what happened is they took 300 soldiers and they get, they held off the, the Persian army of like 10,000, 50,000 soldiers for a long time. So how could 300 people defend against this huge army? They chose a very small corridor or pass or entryway and they just defended this small space um, the way they actually ended up losing is um, the army found a second way to attack the Spartan army and then if you're attacking, getting attacked from two sides 300 cannot hold against 50,000 okay one more story and then I swear I'm done is this is also why Germany I think lost World War II um, they were attacking they were doing they were, they were cruising they were doing really well they had a good African campaign. They had a good European campaign. And then they made the mistake that a lot of generals have made in the past. They decided to attack Russia. And the reason that this was a problem is they, they spread themselves too thin. Um, and now they're getting attacked from multiple sides. If you have the bigger army, you want the position more open. Because you have more troops, you can do more with. So that is the historical lesson of why when you're winning, TKO. Trade, keep it simple, and open up the position. So that is all the strategy you need to know. These are all the openings you're going to need to know. Um, if y'all don't want the openings, definitely still the strategy holds. This is good. This is what I teach my students. I get them really, really honed in on this, and uh, they have made a lot of progress. Um, so hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely like and subscribe. Um, leave a comment if you thought it was good or if you thought there's something I should add or if you thought that this covered all the good stuff. So um, definitely go through a thing, everything. Um, I will have review sheets out and I will have tests available. So if you want a review sheet or if you want to take the test after going through all this, just let me know and I can send it your way. So that's it. Peace.